ran up the stairs to go get that tripod because it's not good when I am touching the camera too much. It gets a horrible rustling noise, doesn't it? Well, I wanted to quickly show you my advent calendars. I ordered and bought Festive Fairy Tale by Beehive Yarns. Oh, and I told you about them already. Um, but I just wanted to show you the reference photo so that really really deep colours and you know a lot of these pictures I kind of I knew already oh how sweet I don't know the name of that artist but I recognise their work definitely fab so there is a oh there's a list of colorways and a box of tiny tiny packages and um i would never peek i would never peek um <laughs> so the good thing some of them are just I mean, would be rude not to look at that point, wouldn't it, really? <laughs> I know, some of you may be in the camp of you're spoiling it for yourself. I don't mind. I'm one of these people. You could tell me the ending of a film. Would not destroy the joy one bit. Absolutely wouldn't bother me at all. No, couldn't care less. And um, I did look at the first, I looked at the first six because I wanted to know if it was a fade or contrasts or just how the general feeling was. And I'm not gonna tell you anything about this advent calendar, but that just helped me to make the decision of what I wanted to make with it. And yeah, I think it is called the Habitation Throw. It's from the, knit vent from last year i think it was last year anyway there's a few, i saw a few people's online and, and everyone has said really glowing things about that project so yeah i will because i hand wind i will hand wind the first three days i think and then put them back in also i have got a terrible memory so if i wound them up today I wouldn't remember what colours they were tomorrow, genuinely. I used to have a really great memory, but at the moment I just cannot retain any information whatsoever. So yeah, that really lovely. And I love how lots of the brands now doing these um, nice little display boxes. And I keep those boxes after I've still got the one from... Um, oh, is it by? Nora George and yeah. well, the names are lovely as well doesn't that make a difference i do like a sweet name like a well a well appointed name and then my auntie and uncle sent me this in the post and um i was having a bit of a crap day to be honest and bleh. and then this came in the post and i was really annoyed that i had to go to the door because <laughs> i was not dressed appropriately for the postman I know the things that we care about so stupid he couldn't have cared less i was wrapped in a towel and i was all disheveled and just come out of the shower anyway um that was a present how nice and um oh i have i only just took it out of the packet just to show you join the tea glitterati with our English tea shop countdown to Christmas. 25 of our delectable Christmas teas, each housed in a beautiful box for extra sparkle. With a different festive blend each day, you'll feel truly spoilt before you've even reached Christmas. Sold. Sold. Thank you. Well, of course, I didn't have to buy it. So you've got these little boxes. This, it genuinely smells like Christmas. Now, I don't know how much this cost. 
but I'm guessing it was very affordable. And I, this came from Amazon. So it's the Engli English Tea Shop Organic tea Advent Tea Calendar. Anyway, how kind is that? And some of these teas sound absolutely glorious. Moroccan spice, unwind me for the season. Oh, don't mind it, but I do. Post festival cleanse me. That's quite apt. I do overindulge at Christmas. Christmas cake, black tea with honey and melon. Mm. Candy cane. So I have no idea if they're any good. I don't even think I've drunk tea from this company, but um. They seem to do quite a few different Christmassy bits and pieces, actually. There's a little picture on the back of just some of their treats. So I will really enjoy this. And if I am working, I should be going back to work temporarily for a little while. Lockdown finishes 2nd of December. So if it doesn't get extended, I guess that I would go back the day after that or that week at some point and I can just pop the days for the advent calendar in my bag and then have them in the morning before work or that will give me something to look forward to so witted on about my advent calendars I did think twice about getting the yarn one because I am on a much stricter budget at the moment and there are there were a few brands brands dyers that i was particularly interested in and um i'd resisted a few and then that one came up and i just had to get it and then not long after the dandelion dogwood one came out and that just <gasps> was glorious and that one was much more colors that i would wear as garments but i'm not upset about not getting that one can get a dandelion dogwood one next year i always love their colors the thing is this year they did agatha christie <gasps> agatha christie <gasps> i am a huge agatha christie fan i adore agatha christie i went to greenway where agatha christie lived and it's um one of the last episodes of the hercule poirot series in the big white house, I think, is it called The Folly? I mean, I love a National Trust property and I love, in general, those old buildings where they're, they're kept as kind of a time capsule in a way and they, they put all the furniture out and it's, a, it's just as if the occupants from whatever century um, it was that they lived in obviously Agatha Christie it wasn't hundreds of years ago it was I think not that long ago not that long ago at all but she has got lots of quite old furniture and things and it is an old property oh it was just beautiful and it really did just look like like she just nipped out and she might come back and there's someone playing the piano in the piano room and in the kitchen someone had made scones and me and my cousin I was speaking about him yesterday Daniel we, we um we got this boat across and you had to ring this bell we went a bit bell mad you're only meant to ring it once <laughs> and then this little this man the grumpy old man takes you across to the property brilliant brilliant and the man let Daniel steer the boat which day made for a little boy, absolutely day made. Oh yeah, scones in the kitchen. Scones make everything better. Anyway, Agatha, Agatha Christie. Absolutely adore her. I love her books. I love the TV adaptations and I love it at Christmas when they do a special. Brilliant. Well, I've bored you long enough with that. God, just wittering on. Let's show you some fun things. So yesterday, I just added the extra one on. Would have been rude not to. It's coming along a treat. I've got my next one as well to um, add in today. 
let's see if that gets done i got my midwife appointment in one two three hours and 45 minutes and i'm gonna walk i walked what i walked the first time back i took a taxi in lockdown and i felt very uncomfortable about it but we don't drive and i didn't know the way there and i was feeling so unwell so i took i took a taxi and that was an absolute that was horrendous i'm sitting down in the taxi and a beeping keeps going off because the car is saying that there's two people in the back well that was just insulting and he kept saying i needed to like stay in one seat well it's not my fault if i was overlapping onto the second seat like i was i wasn't sitting in the middle of two seats i was sitting in one seat and he kept saying oh shuffle to the side i'm digging into the into the edge Stop so offended and then he said to me he said to me when skinny people sit when skinny people sit down i don't have a problem but we have this problem with the larger people oh, i was furious <laughs> didn't tell him though no 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 had to be all british about it oh yes no oh, yes jolly good <laughs> could have oh i was fuming and actually i did not even surpass the stitch line the stitch line was fine so it was his car was broken anyway after that i've decided i'll walk each time and the second time i went i walked i got lost and it's a 45 minute walk and it took me two hours because i walked the wrong way anyway it's actually a really lovely walk it's so autumnal at the moment and there are so many trees and when you walk that way all the big fancy houses that do not look like my teeny tiny house <laughs> and I really love to peep at people's houses and sometimes in them when curtains are not closed I am a window peeper I know hello my name's Christina I'm a window peeper if you do not have net curtains I will peer inside whether I can see there are people there or not I know it's bad it's never got me in trouble though so I feel like until I get in trouble for it I don't like walk up and peep in your window <laughs> not like this <laughs> oh <laughs> you know there's there's a garden in the way you just you know so that's gonna be fun and there's one particular house which I think is a Hercule Poirot house and it's an art deco all white cube with this black detailing and in the middle they've got all these windows and you can see the staircase oh, it's a little bit in disrepair i mean if you have a house like that it really has to be like sp spot on because you've got the white and black and it's art deco so all of the painting needs to be so crisp to get that effect um so i do feel a little bit sorry for the house it needs a zhuzh poor little house i can most certainly imagine david suchet swanning about in there easily distracted right now i think i've got my felt box out let's make some felt things after seeing yesterday's is it in this magazine i want to do the little swedish horse and then I'm going to just pop that into my friend Maria's Christmas card this year. I think that should be fine. It's only going to be really thin and I'll pop it in the Christmas card. I think a postage stamp is enough. I'm sending it within the UK. Any advice on that? If you go. Some cards have got like spongy bits and things on and can be quite thick. And they have pop-up uh, insides and things. I think it's going to be fine. So I'm just going to trace out the horse. And I'm going to use some freezer paper that I bought especially for felt. Because, I mean, I would never use it in the kitchen. I think it's meant to be to wrap meat and things in before you freeze it. But it's got a shiny side and a matte side. You can draw on the matte side. And then on the shiny side, you put that onto your felt and you iron it on. And then you can cut around... The paper with a real crisp accurate 
edge which it can be really really hard to cut felt nicely and you can't really draw on felt very well at all it goes all fuzzy and nasty so let's do that let's whip up a little a little christmas horse for my friend and look there are quite a few templates there they're all kind of cookie cutter shapes really sweet resize these motifs as required i'm just i think i'll do him really tiny i think that's really really adorable and she can hang it off a doorknob or i don't think she's gonna have a treat i went to see her recently her house is a jungle in her living room and i it was amazing i walked in there were plants everywhere every single surface and half of the floor space covered in plants oh it was amazing so you can just hang it off a plant Hang it off a cactus, why not? So I'll show you what I'm up to. Yeah, a couple of hours, a mince pie, definitely gonna have one of those. A drink, maybe some Ribena. Mm. Yeah, let's get crafting. So this is the freezer paper, Reynolds freezer paper. I did buy a few by accident that were wrong. It needs to be this one, as far as I am aware. It just comes in a roll. And one side is matte, the other side has a shine, which is like a, a plasticky, waxy. And I'm just gonna trace, and I can just see through that just enough to, um, to draw. So let's get started. onto the felt that I wanted to use. I didn't film it just because Jason is ironing his shirts at the moment and um, I had to use like tiny ironing board. <laughs> he does not enjoy ironing. Anyway, oh that one's already, I didn't quite stick that one down but in general they do really bond well and now I can just go over with some really sharp scissors. I've got some oh. and I'm just gonna whiz around them And the idea is just to cut off all the felt that you can see and cut to the very, very edge of that paper. And it means you get the most crisp of, of shapes. I've not found any other method to get them so nice. I have tried to draw on the felt with a vanishing pen I've tried pinning the templates on and you just don't get as nice a result and you can label these papers if you're making a project which requires different shapes and anyway when they're done when you're ready to use them if you've got lots of tiny pieces you can't take the paper off but they just peel off perfectly and there's no damage to either side so I'm gonna get my little pile first. I'm gonna go see what. Yes, boy. What for? I tricked you. I didn't put a sewing needle in your shirt. Did you hurt yourself? What I've got, um, I've got the four decorations. I'm gonna do two of these. I'll do one with the blue embroidery and one with the red those will go to two different people and I've just jotted out a little pencil diagram on each paper those have just been peeled sorry those have just been peeled back off the felt so I'd need to still cut out a little heart but I thought these could be French knots 
I'll do another little rectangle, I think, in a white on the top there. Maybe I could do white for all three. Let's see. Um, maybe a little French knot and then just some, I guess, stem stitches maybe. Got some running stitches on here and then we've got a little patch in the middle. And then I think that will all be white running stitches. But yeah, not too bad. And we'll finish those tomorrow. I'm going to run off to my appointment now. So I'll say goodbye here and I'll let you know tomorrow how everything goes. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye, everybody.